In this video, I'm going to show you how you can 10x your content by using automation to convert text content into image carousels automatically. I'll show you step by step how to use make.com to convert text into multiple image formats, square, vertical, and also color variations, which you can then post to platforms like LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, and beyond. Now, my name is Stephen Pope, founder of The Content Engine, and over the past two years, I've helped hundreds of serious personal brands and content agencies automate and streamline their content systems overnight. Now I'm in a blank make.com project. You can go to make.com and create your own account. But the first thing that we need to do is go over to Google Drive. I've created a folder for this project and we're going to create a Google document where we can add in some text content, which we can use to later convert into a carousel. So from here, I'm going to pretend like I'm creating a short text post for social media. All right, so I went ahead and wrote a quick test post here. Remember, this could be posted to LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to use make.com to convert this document into an image carousel. So the first thing we need to do in our make automation is just to load up that document. So I'm gonna load up Google Docs. I'm going to get the contents of a document. I need that document ID. So I'm gonna come back over to the document here. I'm gonna grab this ID from the browser. Remember not to get anything to the left of the slash or to the right of the slash. Now I can just cut and paste this ID straight into make.com and I can go ahead and test this action by running it down here. All right, it looks like we have the contents of that document. I can open this up and I can look at the output. We've got the text content here. We can see our post. So in the next step of the automation, we'll need to iterate through each line of the content in the document so that we can create an image from each line and then we can pull those images together into a unified carousel. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that next step. We're gonna look for an iterator, it should be in flow control. You're going to want to grab that iterator here. And now we're going to construct a line here that goes ahead and splits up each line in this document whenever there is a new line. So I'm going to come up to the tools here. I'm going to go to this section here and I'm going to grab a split. And then to the left of this semicolon here, we are going to add in the text contents from step number one. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to find the text content. I'm going to add that in. Then in this section here, I'm going to break apart this text at every new line. And when I say new line, I just mean when we hit enter and we went to a new line here. So I'm going to break this document into one, two, three, four, five different parts. So I'm going to go to this section here and grab a carriage return as well as a new line. So then I'm going to go ahead and test this here. I'm going to run it. It's giving me a warning here, but I'm going to run the automation anyway. It loads up the document and then it should be splitting that document into multiple bundles. Here we see line number one, line number two, line number three, line number four, and line number five. And so now that we have that text broken apart, we can go ahead and create the various image slides that we need for each one of those lines. So now I'm going to jump over to a platform called Placid App, and I've already created a square carousel that we can start from. And then I'll show you how to build your own when we create a vertical format, and then we can change the colors a bit. But I'll go ahead and use this template that I have now. If we edit the graphic, what we're going to see is that it's really just like a tool like Canva where you can move things around. And then you can add in some text here, which is really just a placeholder. And then we'll be able to replace this text using an API call. So I'll jump back over to make.com here, and I'm going to look for the Placid app. And there we go. So I'll go ahead and grab that. And in this case, we're going to create an image. I picked the proper connection. So now we need to look for the templates. Here's our square carousel that we can select. And it's giving us a place where we can update that text. So it's going to replace this text with the text we pass it. So we can use the value here. And each time this iterator runs, it will replace it with each line of the document. Therefore, this will run five times and it will create five different images. So we can go ahead and save that. So now that we've actually created that image, we're going to want to download it so that we can use it to create a PDF document. So I'm going to look for the HTTP module. We can get a file. We're going to add the URL from the previous step. Notice here it's giving us an image URL. So we can go ahead and add that. We can click OK. And then I can finalize this step here by closing out the iterator. We're going to use this here. Now this iterator here is closing the loop that was started here. So for the source, you want to grab that step here, iterator two. You can leave this as custom. And we're going to want to pass back the data that we got from this file to the rest of the automation we're about to finish up. So you want to make sure you check that data box. That's essentially passing back the information that we got in step four to the rest of the automation. I'll click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and run this just to test and see if things are working. Grabs the document. It starts to loop through each line, creating the image. Now it's downloading the image. Now it's doing the process again. Two, three, 
four, and now five, and you can see it's complete. And remember, it ran five times because we have five different lines in our document, one, two, three, four, five. And so now we can continue on with the automation now that we know everything is working. So this next step here is really to assemble these images back into a PDF. So in this next step here, I'm going to use this PDF.co platform, which is really an API that allows me to manipulate and create and edit PDF documents. So I will type PDF.co. We'll use this action here, which is to convert images into a PDF. Now for the input type, we're going to do upload files because we downloaded all those images in step number four. I'm going to go ahead and use the input files. I'm going to change this to a map. And now I'm going to send it the array that we used when we closed up the loop. I'll name the file test PDF. For the execution mode, I'm going to go ahead and put synchronous. What that means is that the automation will not continue on until this is done. And then for the export options, I'm going to go ahead and download that file. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now the last thing I'm going to do, I haven't tested this, but I'm just going to assume it's going to work. I'm going to upload upload that file back up to Google Drive. So I'm going to go to Google Drive. I'm going to upload a file for the folder ID. I'm going to come over here to our folder ID and I'm going to grab that, head back to make, put that folder ID. And now you can see it already has the file that we had created from this step here. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I should be able to run this automation and have the whole thing work. I'm going to save it. Let's go ahead and click run. Loaded the document. Now it's going to iterate through each line. Now we're on the next step where it's going to combine those images into a PDF. It's done. And now it's uploading that PDF to Google Drive. Let's head over there and see if it's there. And there it is. Let's go ahead and open that. And there we go. Do you struggle to create content? What if you could 10x your content production overnight? Using automation tools like make.com can help you repurpose content. Using make.com, you can convert text into Twitter style image carousels, just like we're doing. That way it doesn't have to be done manually. So you can see how easy it is. We can actually jump back over to Placid. Let's go ahead and duplicate this a couple of different times. We'll do a vertical version. Then I'm also going to duplicate it. And then we'll make a color variation. I'll update the vertical. Let's make the height 1920. So it linked the height and the width. So I just unlinked them, move the width back to 1080. Now we can correct the graphics. So now we've got a vertical version. We can save that. Let's go to the color variation. Let's make this one white, change the color to black. Need to do the same here. It looks like the text that I had here was part of the actual image that I added. So we need to update this with a little bit of text. So we can come up to the controls here. We can change what we have here at Stephen G. Pope. We can format that properly. We can make it bold. We can increase the size. Let's just finish it up here. We don't need to make it perfect. Something like that is good enough for just the example. We'll go ahead and save that. Now we can come back over to make.com. And then what we can do here is we can add in a router and then we can just duplicate what we did here, just clone each of these steps. And then you need to correct any of the yellow bubbles that popped up. So we'll go into each step here. We'll need to replace this value from this iterator here. Value, go ahead and save. Then we'll make minor modifications along the whole chain, just like we did that one. Here we'll use the image from here, not here. And then we'll just keep going here. We need to change the source module to this iterator here. Again, you wanna grab that data. One thing that we did forget to do here is we need to change the template. So I'm gonna come back here. Notice we're using the square template. We need to refresh that. Here we'll create the vertical, save that. Here we just need to change the array. We need to use the array from this iterator. And then we need to change this so that it's using this step here. So we can grab this right there. Go ahead and click OK. You can always click this auto align. It'll just help clean things up for you. Now we should be able to run this one and it should create the vertical version. It's going to create each of the square images. Then it creates the PDF and uploads it to Google Drive. Then it starts the vertical. While this is running, we can check out Google Drive. We've got that new square version, which is going to look just like the last one. Jump back over to make. It's going to create five vertical images. Looks like we had an error here at this PDF. Let's check it out. It says it's missing the value for data. I have the array here. I'm going to jump back over to the iterator here and it looks like somehow I missed checking that box. I'm going to check it again, save it. I'm just going to double check. Looks like it's there now. So I'm pretty confident it's going to work. So instead of just running this now and testing it again, I'm going to duplicate this whole thing again, just for that color variation that we talked about. Create a whole other row here just for the color variation. Connect them up just like we did. Click here to clean it up a bit. Then let's fix each step. Again, I'm going to change the template to the color variation. You're seeing a couple extra text layers here because when we created the graphic in Placid, we had a couple of extra text fields here. So it's picking those up. These are things that you could change if you want, but I'm going to leave those alone and just update this like we did the last time with the value. Use the image from step 16, step 16, image URL, fix the iterator, iterator 15. Make sure we grab the data, save that, fix step here. I'm going to use the array 
from this iterator here. Grab it, should be good. Fix Google Drive, we'll use the PDF. We'll go ahead and save everything. Now let's go ahead and see how it runs. Again, it's gonna create all the images, created the PDF, moved on to the next stage. We can see that next PDF is here. Finished slide five, made the PDF, uploaded it to Google Drive. While this one's running, let's go check it out. Here's the most recent one, let's open that up. Now we've got that vertical version of the same text, line by line, go back to make. Got that fifth slide done, now it's working on the PDF. Now it's uploading to G Drive, let's check it out. Got that new PDF here. So now we've got that variation in white with all the same lines. So as you can see, it's super simple for you to use automations to transform your text content into a wide variety of different shapes and formats and colors so that you can distribute this content to multiple platforms and have it look different, contextualize it appropriately for whatever that platform needs. So as always, I hope you found this video valuable. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It tells me what type of content you want more of. And if you want another video that is gonna show you how to use automations to 10X your content and really help you organize and automate various different workflows that you might have in your content process, make sure to check out the next video. I go in depth on how to use Airtable, how to structure all of your content, and also how to use make.com and ChatGPT to repurpose videos into text, into different formats, your YouTube videos into LinkedIn videos, and also into text content. Check out that video. It's a great video and I'll see you there.